Hey, what's up, boxers? This is Zach Rosette with BuildBox. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can combine shapes to make different obstacles and make different enemies for your video games. It's going to be really short and really easy. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a default template, just a blank slate to get us started with. And then I'm going to delete a few objects here. I'm going to jump into my 3D world get rid of these objects and then I'm going to go to my asset library I'm going to grab a couple brand new objects that we can start off with so first let's go ahead let's use the asset library and one object that I wanted to show you or one enemy I wanted to show you is from the game phases remix that I made recently and I'm going to show you how to make one of the spiky enemies so I'm going to double click on a hexagon and I'm probably going to use one more hexagon as well. And then I'll use a couple cones. Um, you can use whatever shapes that you like, whatever shapes work for your purpose. But I'm going to just use hexagons and cones for this enemy. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into my 3D world. And let me go ahead and I'll drag in my first hexagon. And you can also, there's other ways to make enemies like this. If you wanted to go and make this enemy all in one, you can do that as well. And what I mean by that is you go into this hexagon and you add more 3D models. So you can add the additional hexagon and the additional cones in here. And you can make yourself a specific type of smart asset that's just an enemy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take these different shapes and then you're going to make these objects children of the original hexagon or I'm going to call this the spike enemy. And what we're going to do is we're going to make these other objects children of the spike enemy. And then that is what is going to create the object. So I'm going to make the collision group enemy real fast. I'm going to change the color of this hexagon real fast too. So I'll grab my spike enemy. I'll go over here to my color. And let's make it a nicer, darker color. Okay, great. And just so you can see this a little bit easier, since I am going to be working with dark shapes, I think I might make the background and go here in my mind map, select my 3D world and change the background color to something much lighter, something like a light gray, so that you can actually see what's happening here in the scene, because black on black is kind of hard to see. So let's go ahead and I'll do this um, inner hexagon as well. So I'll drag this hexagon and I'll call this inner hexagon. And this is gonna be more decorative. Um, so we'll make this scale a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna use my scale tool, grab this middle object here, the middle yellow node. I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit more, I think, than that. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and center it right on. Okay. Actually, I think it was centered already. So I'm going to just leave it like that. So you can leave this decoration as a white object, or if you, what I think what I used was I made it a little bit darker, but just black enough so that you can kind of see the difference. So you, you want one uh, to be a different shade of black so that you can kind of see that there's a difference there. So something like that looks all right. You know, you, they're both black, but you can clearly see a distinction between the two different colors of black. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this inner hexagon and we're going to move it inside of the spike enemy. So now with this little arrow here, you can see that this is inside of the spike enemy and you can close and open this. And so you can see that it's going inside of the spike enemy. Now I'm going to drag at the actual spikes that are going to be attached to the spike enemy and we're going to add them to this shape as well. So let's first, let's scale them down. Probably going to move it upwards. Something like that. Probably right about there. Moving back as well. It's a little bit too big, so I'm going to have to scale it down some more. So I'll scale this down. Something like that looks pretty good. You can also scale it side to side if you need to as well. So let's go ahead and I'll rotate this around now. I want something like this. Probably. 25 degrees is going to be good. Let's do 25. Or maybe, actually, let's just do 30. 30 degrees. Okay, perfect. I think what it's going to be is um, there's going to be 30, 30, and then this will be another, like, this will be 90 and 90. So 90, 90, and then uh, this will be 
probably another 60 on each one. I'll show you that here in a little bit. So let's go ahead and move it down and over. Okay, great. I'll make a duplicate of it and just move it over here and then change it to negative 30 and then just add that right there. Perfect. Okay, this is if you want to make the spikes be white. I'm going to actually leave them as white because I think they look kind of nice. But um, you can go ahead and make them whatever color you like and it works out perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 90. And perfect. We'll just squeeze that in there like that. I'm going to press A on my keyboard, create another duplicate, then make this negative 90. Perfect. Slide that in there. And then let's go ahead, I'll hit W on my keyboard, zoom out a little bit, zoom back in, make this down here. And so my guess is, so if it went from 30 to 90, you added 60 degrees, let's add another 60 degrees to 90 and that'll be 150. So 150, it'll either be negative or positive. Okay, perfect. So there's the 150. So we got the other spike in there. And then we'll do one more and make it negative 150 and that should take care of it, perfect. Okay, cool. So now we've got all these cones. All we have to do is select them all. Just drag them in here to the spike enemy. And then you can change this collision group to be an enemy as well and just have the in all three of them be enemies as part of their collision group and then you're good to go. And so now you've got this little spike enemy and you can give this thing rotation or you can move it around. You can use it for all sorts of different games. I think you could use it in lots of different games in different situations. So I think this could be useful. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thought this video was useful. Keep an eye out for more videos coming later this week. And as always, keep unboxing.